Hi, you all. Welcome back to another episode of the Prospering Property Podcast. I am Jasmine. Welcome. Um, today's topic is about how knowing what season you're in. You know, it's very easy for us to sometimes mistake what season we are in because we are so used to what the last season looked like or we're expecting to be in this season. But there's always a transitional period. You know, it when it transitions from summer to fall, the changes are subtle in the beginning, but then you start to notice, oh, okay, it's starting to get a little darker at this time of day. It's starting to get a little cooler. To be honest, you all, I've been in one of the hardest seasons of my life, and that is relinquishing control and knowing that I don't have control over any of this. And when you have moved through life for a very long time, thinking that you are self-sustained and you are, you know, the one making everything happen. When God calls you to a new level in him, it is not easy. And if you have been following my journey so far, then you already know God called me out of my work back in April and I have been walking by faith ever since and trusting in him to pay what needs to get paid, put the food on our table and, you know, just allow us to live. And so I want to speak to those who may be in this season, about to enter this season, just left this season, um, And that is, it's important to recognize what season you are in and what it is that God is calling for you to do. Because if you stay so focused on what things used to look like or how things used to be, you miss your now, you miss your moment. Or if you're looking so far ahead in the future of what you want and how you want it to be, you miss the beauty in your now. And something beautiful that God put on my heart yesterday is that this is a moment of calm. This is a moment of peace. Yes, I don't know how anything is going to happen or how anything is going to work. But at the same time, that's kind of the peace of everything is that it's not on me. I don't have to figure it out. I just have to keep doing what it is that he has called me to do. Rest, spend the time with my children, dive full into his word because I have the time to do so now. I have been working ever since I was 15, had a job ever since, except for a short period when I was in college, um, probably for like a month or, or so. And then I started working again. And so I was working at Chick-fil-A while I I went to college. And, you know, I've always had a regular nine to five job. I've never been this long without a job, except for during the pandemic. But even with the pandemic, I was getting unemployment. And so that is how finances were coming in then. But this period... That's not what I have going on right now. And God is just telling me that, hey, this is your time to sit before my feet without distraction. And if I am distracted, if I am distracted, it's not because of what all I got going on. It's because of what all I got going on in my mind, in my head. Just live. Take it one day at a time. And it's funny because in a way I ask for this. So when you're asking God for things, make sure that you are super positive that that is what you want. Because God is going to give it to you if it aligns with his will. 
but rarely, if ever, does it look as if you expected it to look. And for example of what I'm talking about is I always would say, Lord, people don't ever show the behind the scenes of making it. You always see like someone who has made it and then they'll show, share their story of, you know, what it was like, but you don't ever see anybody really going through the struggle of trying to become more, of trying to become great. And I said, Lord, allow me to be open and transparent enough that as you increase my life, I show that. And y'all, <laughs> he's he's giving it to me. He's, he's allowing it to happen because this season of my life, although it is peaceful on one hand, on the other hand, on the flesh side of things, it is a struggle. It's not comfortable. It's, it's hard. It's challenging. It's discouraging sometimes. And it's not because God is totally because of me and me looking in the past or looking outwardly instead of looking up. You know, we're, we're, we should be looking towards God during this moment. And so this is as much as a reminder for me as it may be for you is just turn to God. Be careful of what you ask for because God is going to most definitely give it to you. And yeah, just, you know, just be in your now. Don't allow your fears. Don't allow your worry. Don't allow your discomfort to steal the joy and the peace of your now. You know, when you're trying to get to your next place of abundance, you shouldn't be wallowing. You should just be moving as if you are already where you want to be. Because if you spend that time wallowing and laying around being depressed and sad about what it is that you do not have or what it is that you used to have that you no longer have, you miss the opportunity to really prepare and get prepared and get into a routine of doing things. Because trust me, when I tell you, when God opens the floodgates, when God releases you, when God takes you out of that secret place, out of the wilderness, into your calling, into your destined place, it is going to be nonstop work. You are going to be moving like you are on fire. You're going to constantly be busy, constantly have something to attend to and something to do. So that is why it is important when you're in your slow season, when you're in your your season of wilderness of, you know, it's not lack. You're not, you're not in lack. You're just waiting for your next. So when you're in that place, it is imperative that you get before God's feet and you get into a routine so that when more is added onto your plate, you can sustain it. You can handle it without getting burnt out because you you already have your basics your foundation in place you're just being built upon from that point forward but if you miss the chance and the opportunity that God gives you to get that established because you're so worried about what you don't have or what you used to have it's not going to be good for you and you know it's funny because earlier today I gave, if you've never seen um, my channel before, I am a mother of three. I have twin, they're 21 months now. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all, time just moves fast. I have twin 21, 21 month year olds and a three year old. And so I made them oatmeal this morning and I've been teaching the boys 
how to blow, how to take small bites. Like my three-year-old, she she got it. She I don't need to help her with that. But with the boys, I've been teaching them that and trying to teach them the difference between hot and cold. And so I gave them their oatmeal because they were very impatient. They just were whining, crying, just not allowing me the time to let the oatmeal cool down. So I said, okay, well, I will give it to you all, but we got to do small bites and you have to blow. You all, they were not doing small bites. They were not blowing. So they kept burning their mouths. Me being their mother, I'm not going to just sit back and watch them continue to hurt themselves because they do not have the maturity to take small bites and blow. So I took away their oatmeal to go put it in the freezer to allow it to cool down. And when I took it away, they started crying. They started throwing a tantrum, just, you know, completely lost it. And that is when God put on my heart that this is how we are a lot of times when it comes to him. Sometimes God will give us the opportunity to prepare and he'll teach us some things. And then there comes a moment of testing where God allows us to show. OK, we learned we learned the lesson. We know what to do. So he'll give us that test. And sometimes we do not pass that test because we are still not yet mature enough to handle it. And so like me taking away the oatmeal, I had the intention to bring it back. I just took it away so that they wouldn't harm themselves. I took it away so that the gift of nutrition would not harm them. And so it's the same with God. When he sees that we are failing with whatever it is he has given to us, or if the gift that he gave to us is now starting to harm us because we're not mature enough to handle it, he will take it away. Not because he's punishing us, but because he wants to bring it back to us when we are either mature enough for it or when the gift can no longer harm us. And so I just thought that was so powerful and so profound and such a beautiful example that he gave to me today of, you know, how we are and how some things can seem as if it's a punishment, as if we are in a place of not getting what it is that we need, but really God is protecting us. He is safeguarding us. He is going to bring it back. He's going to give to us. It's not that he doesn't want to give to us. It's just we can't handle it right now. It's going to harm us right now. So what we should do while we wait is not cry, not throw a tantrum, not think, oh, woe is me. Why me? Why do, why do you have me here? No, we should be patient and we should trust that God knows what he's doing and that he is going to supply our every need. He knows that we're hungry, just like I knew my children were. I knew my children were hungry. I was bringing it back and it wasn't going to be for long. They didn't have to sit without their oatmeal for long. It was probably, you know, a minute, if that, of them waiting. But when you're hungry, when you don't see anything in front of you, sometimes it can feel as if you are waiting forever but really it's not. It's not long. It won't be long. He's just protecting you. So I hope that this resonates. I hope that this helps. I hope I was able to say it in the way that God gave it to me. And I hope whoever needs to hear this is able to hold on to this and grab a hold to it and keep it in their heart. And trust and believe and know God got you. Whatever God may have taken away from you, 
trust and believe he's going to bring it back. And if he doesn't bring that exact thing back, he's going to bring back something even better. So have patience, have faith. And while you wait, just believe in him, trust him, give thanks, be glad and have patience. Don't think about the hunger. Don't think about what you used to have. Don't think about don't think about what it could look like. Just be glad. Be patient. So you all, I thank you so very much for spending the time with me today and if I jumped around, I do apologize you all. I do not script this. I do not uh, pre-plan it before I sit down and talk. I literally just ask God to give to me what it is that he has for whomever this reaches and allow me to be used by him. At the end of the day, that is all that matters is being used by him. And I hope and I pray that I am making him proud and I am doing what it is that he has called me to do. So you all, in the meantime, in between time, let's continue to prosper properly as its property. Prospering property.